another type of geometry that we often deal with other than the cylindrical symmetry or geometry that we looked at in the last question are these things called parallel plates or where we basically assume them to be infinite plates because they're infinite plates of charge we'll say they're positively charged now of course they go on forever and this plate also extends in and out of the screen forever as well so the only possible arrangement of electric field would be that all the electric fields would be parallel and going away normal to the surface there's no reason for it to be off on an angle like that because the symmetry doesn't allow for it if you remember from the first section you kind of know that these things are somewhat special but using Gauss's law we can quickly prove that without doing any integration at all so let's do that really quickly in this case the Gaussian surface that will take just from saying that all the electric field must move away from the plane perpendicular to it we can take any kind of area or closed surface that looks like this where a good chunk of it is perpendicular to the plate such that they're parallel to my electric field wink wink so these surface all the way around basically gives us a flux of zero because the electric field is parallel to the surface or perpendicular to my normal there and then we have some kind of end cap that has constant distance away from the plate and because it has the same distance away from the plate the symmetry dictates that it should have the same magnitude of electric field so the particular shape doesn't really matter we just I mean if you look head on we could say it's square or circular it doesn't really matter we just know that it has an over area of a and that every one of these points has an electric field that has the same magnitude and all perpendicular to the surface all the time so then we can say and conclude that the flux of these maybe you can think of them as end caps again is equal to that that's just a definition of flux this term is going to be just the size of the e all the time and so we just have to multiply by the area whatever that area is now completing gauss's law we can say that the flux is equal to q enclosed over epsilon naught then putting it together in gauss's law we need the charge enclosed to be equal to my total flux so the charge enclosed is the charge that's in this part of the plate if the total plate has say charge q and we have a total area of a then the charge that we're after is a total a total but then we multiply by just the part that we want it's kind of like a ratio all the five by epsilon naught on the other side we have the total flux so we want this but remember we have two separate end caps we have one on this side and one on this side so that's twice that they both are in the same sign because in both cases the electric field goes out of my closed surface they're both leaving in this positive case so they add up actually the area goes away the area that I chose so again doesn't really matter what it is it all cancels out this here if you remember we can define that as the surface charge density the size of the E becomes that and we had this result before uh, the cool thing about this is this no longer depend on this particular distance we don't care how far that point is that point can be here can be here can be here as long as it's outside the plate and we're including all that charge the electric field is the same so this again gives us the very nice result of if we have an infinite plate we get uniform electric field remember in the last chapter we had to integrate a couple times in different dimensions and take some nasty integrals in order to get this result using Gauss's law we can make a comment about the symmetry all we said was because of the symmetry the electric field has to go away and perpendicular from the plate all the time 
and we pick an appropriate Gaussian surface and then through four lines, not even, we get the same result. Again, the power of Gauss's law once we have the appropriate symmetry that we're taking advantage of. So this is the crucial result that we want. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and solve this question fairly quickly. So here, we have not just the one plate, we actually have two plates. They have a certain area, which is 0 0.1 meters times 0 0.1 meters, 10 cm on the side, and they have opposite charge. So this is a Q and that's negative Q. The plates are a certain distance apart. Usually that matters really little because again, um, the field is uniform, no matter how far away you are. And they want the electric field at the center of that region. So at this particular point, what is E? So that doesn't seem to relate very much to all the stuff I just did. But since we're just looking at the center point, we can treat these as infinite plates as well in the sense that we're only interested in just that part right in the middle. So compared to the size of my Gaussian surface or the end cap size, these actual plates can be very, very big. And so we can treat it very much like an infinite size plate, even though the size is very finite. But the point I'm interested in is very small compared to that. And it's right in the middle. If you were to ask me what's the electric field at this point, then we of course cannot ignore the fact that we're near the edge where the electric fields tend to stray kind of sideways and outwards. But in the middle, everything happens very much like the infinite plate. Then there's one last fancy word I have to invoke here, and that's the principle of superposition. Because we don't have one plate, we have two separate plates. This quote-unquote superposition just says we can add the result of each plate separately, ignoring one from the other. So this question of how much electric field is at this point, it's actually broken up into two parts. I have a positive charge. This would give me an electric field going away from it call this E plus because it's the plus charge equal to my sigma plus over two epsilon naught. And then I want to add in the effect of the negative plate separately at the same point. And because it's a negative charge, the field goes towards it and the size is given by sigma minus over two epsilon naught. So that's the fancy word of superposition. It just means you can add stuff. So the total electric field is E plus plus E minus. In this case, they both go in the same direction. We'll call that, I don't know, X. So you know that is the magnitude of the plus one in the I hat direction plus the magnitude of the minus one in the I hat direction as well, because we've already accounted for the direction. And in this case, uh, the sigma here happens to be the same because the two have the same magnitude of charge equals the magnitude of the charge divided by the total area. So you can work that out fairly easily. So then these two have the same magnitude. And so we get that twice the sigma in the i hat direction. And then the two cancels out. We get just the charge divided by the area divided by epsilon naught. And there you go. And we sub things in just to work out an answer. And I'll convert the units first so that I'm not all confused about centimeters, centimeters square, in the numerators, in the denominator, things like that. Convert it first. Epsilon naught, constant you can look up. In the end, giving you some numbers of newtons per coulomb. If you work out the units, everything works out in the I hat direction. So, so just to show you how when we have multiple parallel plates, for each parallel plate, Gauss's law gives us this expression. And then we add their contribution up using superposition for a particular point to give us the result that we need. And because parallel plates gives us basically uniform electric fields, the math tends to end up quite simple.